What is up my dudes and dudettes? This is Byron here and today I want to discuss what I've been thinking about for a while especially with this whole Six Flags and Cedar Fair merger that had recently occurred and everything based on what types of like gut feelings that I have. So basically we all know that this merger owns three properties the Peanuts, Looney Tunes, and DC Comics. But hold your horses right there because I want to talk about something. Honestly regarding the Peanuts licensing it is set to expire 2025 Although there's an option where they could renew it to like 2030. Which honestly, I do not have a gut feeling about the Peanuts getting renewed for that. Even though that Carowinds is basically planning on getting Camp Snoopy expanded and such. Which, that's totally fine honestly. Well sure, of course, Kings Island had originally gotten the new mini Camp Snoopy area. But unfortunately, based on my perspective, I think that the Camp Snoopy that we have at KI is actually the weakest out of any other Camp Snoopy areas at other parks. Because honestly, regarding the other parks, I bet that theirs, including Cedar Point, Carowinds, and Knott's Berry Farm, have theirs as like the strongest. But when it comes to other IPs, a lot of people are really skeptical about DC Comics and Looney Tunes coming into like each park and such like, oh no, uh, uh I'm sorry, but uh, we don't want the Looney Tunes or DC Comics in there because uh, the Peanuts are more friendly friendly and such. And like, oh, they're more of that than the Looney Tunes, which I mean, I totally get where they're coming from and it's kind of true. But the Looney Tunes are also for everybody as well, whether you're liking it or not. And with DC Comics, it's more geared towards like, you know, older kids and teens and adults. But there's basically one intellectual property that I have a gut feeling that could be repurchased, but I'm not saying it's going to entirely. And if it does, there are some ideas that I can throw into this situation. So basically, I want to talk about the Nickelodeon IP. So we all know that Nickelodeon used to be at some of the parks, like the Paramount Parks, back when Paramount owned the parks like King's Island, the King's Minion, and Carowinds, for example. They basically did right until they got bought out by Cedar Fair. And I'm not gonna lie, but I do agree that Paramount was just only trying to advertise movies in the parks that they did not own, and how people, including the older fans, did not appreciate what Paramount has done here and there. But to be honest, there was some cool stuff that Paramount did. Like for example, uh, they had Tomb Raider the Ride at Kings Island. They had the Boomerang Bay water parks, which I do remember in one of Kings Island, but not with the Crocodile Duddy one, although they had the Jack Roo type of statue there that I remember as a kid. And even one of my favorite cartoon channels that I loved growing up as a kid, but not like entirely cartoons, but also live action at the same time, kind of like Disney, but just with slime. You all know what it is. It's basically Nickelodeon. Like honestly, when Kings Island expanded Nickelodeon Central and Hanna-Barbera Land to Nickelodeon Universe, I was amazed by it, honestly. Well, sure, Hanna-Barbera had a lot more uniqueness in it too, but Nickelodeon was what I grew up with because I'm a Gen Z guy. And basically when it comes to the buyout, uh, everything had to be changed here and there. And the licensing had to be like very limited because of how expensive that a lot of IPs from like most of the Hollywood and studio companies really are, especially from LA, which I totally get where they're coming from here. But when they did away Nickelodeon to the peanuts, I was just, completely devastated. And I mean, sure, I did enjoy the Peanuts for a while, right until I started losing interest in the Peanuts. Not because of the fact that it's for kids, which basically the Peanuts is basically for everybody. And I like the Peanuts. But the thing is, I was more into Nickelodeon and I really loved how they had the IP there at Kings Island and even like at other former Cedar Fair parks that were also Paramount parks as well. Although I've never been to like other ones, but I remember doing research of them like on the internet, on YouTube, but even on MySpace, which MySpace is nowadays a dead horse. But apparently when it comes to Nickelodeon, I used to love this so much. Although nowadays I don't really like Nickelodeon as much anymore, especially because of the allegations that have been like thrown out against multiple people, especially the ones that are like pedophiles because Nickelodeon was hiring quote unquote pedophiles, which literally gave Nickelodeon a bad name. And that is basically why that several actors and writers had a really hard time in Nickelodeon. And some of them have not been talking about their experiences with them and why they have not been positive, which not only Nickelodeon has been involved in it, but also Hollywood in general has been involved in that as well. Like Disney and Sony. And like, especially when it comes to predatory behavior, it's like, wake the hell up America. This is not like, dude, this is why we have the Me Too movement going on. And this is why we have a lot of like, you know, like predatory awareness and prevention type of movement going on as well. And it's mainly because of that. But here's the thing about this. Nickelodeon was completely removed from the ex Perma parks, not because of the allegations, even though they occurred before, during, and after that time being, but it was mainly because of the licensing. And it's kind of weird how a lot of people think that, oh, uh, Nickelodeon, had to be taken out because those allegations were happening, which the allegations were yet publicly made 
until years after Nickelodeon was pulled out of some of the theme parks. And that's basically something. And honestly, I do get why some of the attractions had to be removed, especially based on what has been going on, like with people being involved in the projects, which clearly made it to the point that some of them turn out to be like, you know, bad guys and creating controversy. And basically companies in general really want to avoid controversy at all costs, which is why they do that. Take a look at Disney, for example. They got rid of a couple of attractions like Captain EO and also Extraterrestrial and the real reasons that they were removed were mainly because of the controversies that were going on involving Michael Jackson from Captain EO and also another guy from the Extraterrestrial ride that used to be at Disney. And that's basically that. Now to dig deeper, Captain EO, for example, it was gone for like 13 to 16 years, depending on which Disney park it was. And then several years after the removal, Michael Jackson died and fans were pleading Disney to bring Captain EO back, which they did. And yet years later, more controversy of Michael Jackson started coming in and Disney was like, you know what? Uh, let's just cut ties with Michael Jackson, even though he's dead, like frick off here and there. It's like, yeah, that's that's what happened. Now, I'm not saying that I expect the same with Nickelodeon in the theme park industry, but here's the thing. Nickelodeon is slowly becoming a little more relevant again. Not because of the controversies, but mainly because of the beloved animated cartoons that they've had, or should I say Nicktoons, and even the slime that they've, had, that they've had over the years and the events that they've done. Now, here's the thing. Not everybody and Nickelodeon are pedophiles. And I mean, I'm pretty sure that they don't have pedophiles there anymore, but we don't know that, honestly. Okay, I, I gotta stop talking about this quote unquote PDF file type of shit. But here's the thing, when it comes to the Nicktoons, you gotta look at it this way. SpongeBob is currently relevant. Dora is about to get a reboot. The Fairly Odd Parents already has a reboot. The Rugrats recently had a reboot and same with Blue's Clues. And we also have been having some recent cartoons that were ganging some popularity like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which they were originally not from Nickelodeon, but they were recently acquired by Nickelodeon. Same thing with Garfield. Uh, Nickelodeon had also created Paw Patrol for the little kids, as well as the Light House, which honestly regarding the lot house sure it does not have a healthy fan base it's an okay show i mean it's perfect for kids but it's not as bad as the shows that had like more toilet humor and a lot more inappropriate behavior as well despite it being created by a creep and let's not forget about the fact that nickelodeon actually made this cartoon called rock paper scissors which i really hope that it lasts as long as you know the loud house but we'll see and we've also had like reboots of you know, all that, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Are You Afraid of the Dark, as well as Zoe 101, The Good Burger Movie, and even iCarly. But anywho, despite all the controversies regarding Nickelodeon, especially with Quiet On Set, the dark side of kids TV. With all those controversies out of the way, I would basically like to start talking about some ideas that I would like to throw out, especially for like theme parks like Kings Island, even Six Flags for America, and some of those like, just may maybe just a limited amount of parks that could have the Nickelodeon IP in the Six Flags merger. If they were to repurchase the Nickelodeon IP despite it being so expensive, it's like, okay, well, with Paramount asking for more money, well, guess what? This isn't 2006 anymore, this is 2024. Now, let's say, for example, if Kings Island wants to bring back the Nickelodeon universe type of area, but like, as an IP itself and make it more modernized. Now, in the Six Flags merger, and even in the Cedar Fair days, they say that they never say never which is a good thing. But if they were to do that, there are some ideas that I could throw out. If Kings Island were to, were to bring back, like let's say for example in 2026, like for Nickelodeon Universe's supposed 20th anniversary, and based on the ideas I have for that area, especially with the IP and such, is that when it comes to Nickelodeon, besides the company itself being part of Paramount, they could honestly add some like new rides and maybe like one new roller coaster, but not like a very huge one, but like something that would be relevant to kids and adults. Like for example, the rock bottom plunge that could replace Woodstock's air rail, the TMNT shell shock that could replace the PNS 500, uh, the Bubble Gubbies balloon ride that could replace the off-road rally, and even that mini Paw Patrol neighborhood that could take over the Woodstock Whirly Birds, as well as a Butterbeans Cafe type of like, you know, the mini cafe based on the Nick Jr. show where Linus Beetlebugs is at. And also the new and improved Krusty Krab, based on the restaurant from SpongeBob itself, where the Planet Supergirl will be at, but like tearing down, just rebuilding it. And I mean, they could also bring back some of the theming, like uh, retheming some of the rides back to what they were, but making them a little more modernized, like turning Surf Dog back into the Avatar ride and turning the Red Baron ride 
back into Blue Skidoo, Joe Cool to Jimmy Neutron, but more modernized. Woodstock Express to the Fairly Odd Coaster, but adding more storytelling to it, and Snoopy's Junction to La Ventra de Azul. And even Kaiden Tree to plank this plot, just like, you know what I mean here? And I mean, they could also rethink some of the rides to like other rides, like the Hey Arnold Taxi Chase and the Loud House crazy bus ride and they could also rethink some of those uh, some of the rides like the flying eagles ride and that linus launcher ride to like the spongebob themed rides like spongebob's jellyfish jam and uh spongebob fly pants which dream world has that same type of ride which they actually built that in 2008 i mean they could do the same with some of those as well it's like that could be cool but as for the log ride they could just turn it back into an original king's island type of log ride but not like the nickelodeon or peanuts type of ride honestly and they could also add a teacup ride based on the fairly odd parents like the fairy world spin which could be connected to that mini paw patrol area like with a few rides there and they could also modernize the kids swing ride but by going ahead and retheming it to the nick jr swings it's like you know what i mean i mean that could be cool and what about the boo blast ride i mean that could maybe turn into like the modernized phantom theater or probably like maybe repurchase the scooby-doo ip to make it back to turn it back into you know scooby-doo and Haunted castle but i doubt that'll happen or basically something new because i don't really see the peanuts dark ride happening anytime soon but yeah and you know they could also add some like you know the nick Tin show but basically calling it let's party kind of like what they have in like other countries they could also do more events and bring back the parade but by calling it uh the nick street parade which they have that in Australia. It's just basically some ideas that I've thrown for the area. And I mean, they could also retheme Snoopy Soapbox Racers into the Coca-Cola Orange Streak, kind of like the Pepsi Orange Streak, but basically with a different theme. And not to mention as well, but uh, they could also bring in the Nickelodeon area to like Six Flags Great America since the merger had already begun. It's like, here's the thing, they don't have the Looney Tunes area like they once did. They don't have the camp cartoon area like they used to. And also they don't have other themes like the Wiggles and Thomas and Friends like they did back in the 2000s and even 2010. And basically regarding that area that, you know, was just basically a, a hidden entertainment type of area, it's just a shell of its former self. So, I mean, that would be something to think about as well. But yeah, guys, um, that is all I have to throw out here, honestly. Um, I think that would be really cool to do that and just, uh, you know, completely modernize, you know, the Nickelodeon days and just, you know, passing it down to, like, future generations and having, like, both kids and adults, like, run on almost every single ride and, you know, without, like, any type of, like, age limit, basically. But, I mean, well, for almost every single ride, basically, in that park. And I really hope that in the future that they could uh, take that into consideration. Because, honestly, Nickelodeon has been, like, promoting a, a lot more, almost. Like, for example, uh, SpongeBob and Dora were actually involved in the Super Bowl this year. And there's also gonna be like a new Nickelodeon Hotel building in Orlando, Florida. Not in the same location, but in a different one. And it's gonna be modernized, which is gonna be very cool. But that will not open until 2026. And also at my local zoo, the Cincinnati Zoo, they actually started promoting the Dora reboot before a scavenger hunt type of activity that they have going on here. And not to mention, but Avatar The Last Airbender is basically regaining its popularity, which is a good thing, especially with the new TV series that's basically on Netflix. And I really hope that maybe one day we'll see a Drake and Josh reboot, but despite the controversy that's been going on with Drake, who knows?